Oi, yeah you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. This week, the guys are talking up, daring to think differently. Let's have a listen to the conversation. Well, welcome to episode number five. Have we got a theme no, song? No, we can't. We can't come in without a theme song. Okay, well, do your theme song. Golden brown texture like sun <laughs> lifts me up with my munchie run. Where do you where do you pull these up. from? Where do you pull them from, though? So good. Takes me back to when I was a fetus. Right. <laughs> Um, anyway. So we're in a new studio, which means absolutely nothing to the people who are Go hearing us and not seeing us. We're, we're done with the background. theme song. Listen we're done, we're done with, with the theme machine. song. Anyway, moving right along. We're in a new yeah. studio. Yeah, they just put makeup on me. Which and, is they've just, and you look amazing. No, but I kind of felt nice. I can't, like, <laughs> I can't see myself reflected in your face okay, anymore, you know? no. It kind of felt nice. It was nice. <laughs> it was nice because Cleve did it. Cleve, I know. Cleve and makeup. I know. Cleave anyway, um... So, so um, I want. Oh, we're, we're, well, we're in a new studio yeah. and it's really cool. And I really don't actually know what we're talking about today. So, do you want to. Well, I kind of got given out to on our last podcasts because um, they were telling me that I wasn't giving you enough airspace. Well, so. Awkward. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you more airspace this time. And I think we want to hear a little bit more from you, Amelia. Okay. Okay. So, you're going to have to participate. All right. So, I'm going to put my serious glasses on now. Okay. For those of you that are listening to this thing, I've now got my serious glasses now. Yeah. Okay. So, I got this um, Facebook link last week, which is really interesting about um, belief systems around eating animals and eating meat. Oh, that video. Mm. Oh, now I know which video you're Did you watch about. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. But, uh, it was interesting because, um, and then there was a couple of other feeds that I'd had, and I'm so crap on Facebook. You are. Honestly. You're technologically, I mean, technologically just, challenged. I've, no. I tagged you in a really important post the other day and you still haven't. Oh, that was an acknowledgement, yeah. was it? Yeah, but anyway, let's. Uh, an acknowledgement for you? Yeah. No, for There's no reason for me to okay, have that. Cool. Um, so, but it, it was a really interesting, interesting because they were talking about, I mean, my wife said to me years ago, you know, there's going to come a time where we will see, we will no longer see, you know, cattle trucks driving down the highway with animals in it. Um, and she said, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, you know, it was the same sort of thing, except it was it was people in, in those things. And so my, my wife is, um, she's a trying to be vegan. She's definitely a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. She doesn't eat meat. And it was talking about the extremities of veganism and, well, the extremities of, of um, yeah. um, vegetarians and the extremities of veganism in terms of their belief systems, right? Yeah. So the point was they were saying that, you know, a vegetarian's belief is very extreme. You know, they won't eat meat, but a vegan is even more extreme. You know, they won't have leather seats in their cars. They won't wear leather shoes. They don't have any, they don't eat anything, you know, with a face. They don't eat any fish, any form of meat at all. Yeah. Um, and anything derived from animals. In yeah. Any and they were, they were having a go at, at um, this particular chap who was a vegan and he made a really important point. He said, well, let, that's your belief system that we're really extreme. So let's have a look at the interviewer's belief system. And the interviewer's belief system is this, that you will take an animal um, and you will get that animal and you will feed this animal in a field and then you'll take the animal and you will slaughter the animal, you will butcher the animal, you will then cook the animal and you will eat its rotten flesh. And I thought, holy shit. Now, and then he said, I think that that's an extreme of a belief system. And I sat back and I thought about it and I thought, whoa, now where does that fit? Yeah, how does that relate with us? How does that fit into our model? And I mean, you know, air, air, air philosophy is really simple. Like it's really simple. It is really simple. But the problem is, is that for people who've never heard of anything like this, it does seem extreme. Yeah. It seems like it's, like, how can you possibly think like that? How mm. could you possibly see what you're seeing, see mm. the world or view the world how you're viewing the world? But I think that the people who are thinking like that, the way you just said, yeah. how can you put, are actually not thinking. Yeah. I think I that the thinking that they have is not actually their own thinking. It's somebody, else think, somebody else's views yeah. imposed on them. They yeah. think they're thinking, yeah. but they're, they're regurgitating just being, yeah. almost. Yeah. Well, I, I think that they're being loyal yeah. to how society 
should see things because society hasn't worked out how to see things greater. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you see something um, that is that you perceive as negative has happened to you in your life, you know, and you adhere to society's view of it, society goes, oh my God, that's terrible. What happened to you was really bad. But if, you know, what if, if you were to be able to turn that around? What if you were, if, if you were able to stop and look and go, well, in actual fact, in that moment, uh, you know, I had to be really strong to come out the other side of it. I had to be really courageous. I had to be really open. You know, I had to, I had to be forgiving. I had to be humbling. I had to, you know, what if out of that comes your, your, your greatest gift? You know, what if out of that you actually turn your life around? And if you look at, like, if we go to, if we go to Hollywood, you look at, you know, any of the greatest comedians, you know, I remember reading Billy Conley's uh, book, which yeah. was wrote by Pamela uh, Stevenson. Stevenson yeah. Now, Pamela Stevenson, by the way, was a comedian and she used to work with Not the Nine O'Clock News um, in, in the yeah. uh, early 80s. And she was a brilliant comedian. And Not the Nine O'Clock News were all these guys from, you know, from Oxford and they were very well educated. Educated, yeah. And, 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 you know, you had Ron Atkinson was one of Not the Nine O'clock News. Ron Atkinson is an amazing, amazing uh, comedian. But, um, be, you know, behind all great comedy is great tragedy. And if you research the history of any of their lives, they all had really, really, really tragic upbringings. Like Robin Williams. The is, comedians. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they took what happened to them and turned it around. You know, the way in which they handled life was to start to, there was no other way to look at it other than to, you know, I've got to turn this into a joke. I've, I've got to, the only way for me to actually counter what is going on here in my life is I have to find a humor in it. And, it, you know, but they were talking about Billy Connolly and, and Billy Connolly, now don't let me take over. No, no, okay. I'm, I, I'm, Billy I'm, Con Billy Connolly was talking about how he was, you know, how he became a comedian and he was a banjo player and he'd go, he'd travel around from pub to pub to pub in Ireland and also in, in Scotland. And these pubs were really rough. Like, you know, they had cages in them. You'd get bottles thrown at you. And he said one day he was on stage and he's singing a, you know, he's singing a song and he suddenly forgot the lyrics. So he was on stage and he said, you know, I'm just short of getting 20 bottles thrown at me on stage. So he said, I had to think of something. So what he did was he thought of a joke and he told us a real life story about his aunt and his aunt was crazy. In the end, his, like his aunt used to beat him with the yeah. heel of a shoe, yeah. he used to knock his teeth out. And in the end, when they went, she went missing. And when they went looking for her in the house, she was living under the raft, under the floorboards of the house. So the woman was completely insane. And, and Billy, you know, Billy got in, in his, um, his, uh, in the biography, he goes through his whole life and talks about the tragedy of what occurred. But when he was on stage, he, he told this really funny story about the, his life with his aunt. And the whole audience were like rolling around the floor. And then he remembered the lyrics and went back into the song. And if you look at how he, he actually, um, if you see Billy in concert, that's exactly what he does. He sings a song, he stops. He then tells a story for about 20 minutes and the ending of the story leads him back into the song and away he goes. So behind all great um, tragedy or, or great comedy is, is great tragedy. Any of them, like Robin mm -hmm. Williams, any of them. Um, 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 um. So, so I, I, I get what you're saying, right? But let's mm. get back to the point yeah, of yeah. what we're actually talking about, right? Because I think, because, and the reason being is it's an important point. So what you're saying is that behind all great comedy is great tragedy. Yeah. But I think that what we're saying here is that the way we see things is mm. that we, people go through life right? Mm -hmm. And as they go through life, shit happens. We can't avoid shit yeah. happening, right? Yeah. And so stuff is going to happen, uh -huh. but we have a choice. Yeah. We can either carry that along and make that the reason why we don't go and live the lives that, that we want to live, that we live yeah. or we can stand on the shoulders of that and use that as our greatest tool yeah. to live our best life. And yeah. that's what we're saying that these comedians are doing yeah. and that these guys are doing. They're, yeah. they're sure that they've had this stuff happen to them, but rather than carry it around with them, they're using it as their greatest yeah. tool. Yeah. So people think that that's extreme. This is what we're talking about, right? Yeah. That the way that we think that, well, actually, if we were to look back at what, what happened there, yeah. we can make out of it whatever we want. Yeah. We can... We can we can make it the worst thing that's ever happened or the yeah. best thing that's ever happened. Well, but you see, I think it's extreme for a person to take what happened to them and drag it through their lives as their reason never to step up and shine. I think it's extreme for a person to take...
take that event that happened to them and live their lives as a victim of that event because the event never ends. It's always <coughs> occupying their mind Agreed. in space and time. It never, ever ends. Because it might have happened once at that time, yeah. but because they're, they're, they're living that over and over and over again, it's actually yeah. continuing to happen to them throughout their yeah. lives. But I'm going to play devil's advocate here, right, mm-hmm. because I know that there's people listening out there that yeah. are going, well... That that might be well and all well and good for you, but what about people who've had I mean, serious I've, I've, shit? I know, but I've, I've had serious shit happen to me. You've had serious shit happen. Yeah. We we all have serious shit that happens to us. Um, and when I talk, when, I think when we're talking about we, we're not just talking about you and me. No, no, I we're talking about that. people who go, okay, this happened to me. But how do I evolve out of it? How do I use it? How do I how do I go? Okay, I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to embrace what occurred, and I'm going to find the gold and the gems and that, and I'm going to use those that gold and those gems to actually create a life for myself. Mm. to actually go, you know what? Who am I as a result of that? Because you're not the sum of the event. Yeah. And I think it's extreme for a person to think they're the sum of the event. I think that that is important. You are not the sum yeah, of the event. You. you are not the sum of what happened to yeah. you. And, that and, is not, yeah. you can choose to identify with that yeah. as the only thing about who you are, but that's not all of who you yeah. are. And when you're doing, I, I mean, uh, but, uh, you know, people sometimes feel that they have to, adhere to what society says but when you're working with the individual every single time they they want know, to yeah. they want to emanate and shine they want to go listen this stuff occupies my mind all the fucking time it determines how i am with my husband it determines my behavior with my kids i don't want it to do that anymore how do i take what occurred and turn it into my greatest blessing how do i take what occurred and turn it into my vision and my mission and how do i help other people to do the same thing to turn it into their vision and their mission what occurred for them actually um shape their own eminence, the person that they actually so are. So what stops, so here's what I'm thinking then when as we're talking about that, right? The people that come to us to, to do any work with us, right, mm. at some level mm. have asked for the possibility to view things in a different mm. way, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that what, what, what do you think then stops anybody else from seeing it or from what do you think can makes people feel like this way is so extreme, that our way of thinking is so extreme? Is it because do you think that they, they don't know how or they don't even, that it hasn't registered in some way that there, another way is possible? Like what's well, the, it's, what's it's the a, gap? We, we, get, back, the we gap? get back to the vegetarian and the veganism. Yeah. Um, it, it, the only reason... That that concept looks actually extreme. Uh, looks extreme is because the person who's judging the vegan and the vegetarian hasn't stopped to think about perhaps how extreme their view is. So, so you're hasn't saying st- that nobody's pointed out to them. To, nobody's pointed out to them. Pointed it out to them. <laughs> nobody's pointed it out to them that um, do, do you get that that you get an animal and you feed it in a field. And you then take that animal and you, you slaughter the animal. You kill it, you slaughter it, you butcher it, you cook it, and then you eat its rotten carcass. So what has to happen? Because then suddenly you sit back and you think, fuck, I never thought of it like that. That's right, because you're not thinking. So I think the gap is is that people have to think. You have but, to stop but, and But think. people can't think, Mitch. Some t- it's not that they can't think. It's that when you know something all of your life, like I remember prior to doing any personal development work on myself, mm. right, and I, I started when I was probably about 26, right, just like a couple of years ago because um, I'm yeah. very young. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I started when I was about 26 and but up until that point, yeah. right, I wasn't exposed to that. And there's people that are 50, 60, 70 who've never been exposed to that sort of stuff, right? But I don't know what I'm saying. What well, I yeah, saying? I think what oh, you're, yeah, I, think I was going to say, so up until, like, unless you're exposed yeah. to somebody who thinks in a different way, mm-hmm. you're constantly going to be thinking that your way is the only way, it's the only normal way. No, I've got a couple of children okay, that I feel like. Because everybody has a knowing to neutralise their extreme emotions. Yeah, that's true. I everybody, know that everybody knows... That, but and, and but what happens is sometimes people are loyal to other people's opinions of them. And when you're loyal to someone else's opinion of you, you have no opinion of your own life or who you are. Does that make sense? So you're, yeah. We do it out of loyalty. I mean, I, I, I remember I used to go to church out of loyalty. You, you know, I, because my I was loyal to my father's view. My father had this view that church was it, and this was how it worked, and and that was his thing. And I I was respectful of that, and I was and but I was loyal to his view of it until I got my own until I looked, 
and, and, and I got my own opinion. And then when I got my own opinion, then I was like, okay, now I see the world a little bit differently to my dad, but I still appreciate my father's view of, of religion and what he does. That's his view. But I, w w there comes a point within our lives where we realize that we are not the sum of the event. We all have a knowing of that. So then how do, so, so what would you recommend? Like, like for you to have that new thought or for you to have a new awareness that the world you were living in yeah. was made perhaps extreme or perhaps it was only one way because you were loyal to those events. You did you you needed somebody outside. I mean, I know you knew it. Like I knew I, I I'm the same. I had a knowing there was something greater than this thing that yeah. I, I didn't know how to access. And perhaps it's the how that is missing because I didn't know how to access it back at that time. But I in a way I needed some of these outward things outside of me to reflect back to me that perhaps I wasn't you know, perhaps there was another oh, yeah. way to think. But I mean, life whispers to us all the time. You know, we're a feedback system. Mm, so that so it's and so everybody. Yeah. That's 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 cool because everybody has something. Yeah. Inside or if, has if, a, if, has a whispering yeah, totally, and, and, and totally, understanding totally. and awareness inside. If yeah, I yeah, say yeah. to a person, if anybody who's listening to this, you know, who who wants to break free of anything that's going on, ask yourself, okay, just yesterday alone, what sign did life yeah. give you yeah, that yeah, was yeah. showing you that there was more going on than what you was going on, what was occupying your mind? You know, you got to think about it better like this. Like, why did Edmund Hillary want to climb Mount Everest? I mean, there's, there's nothing fucking up there. Like, there's nothing up there. There's there's ice and rock and and glaciers and it's freezing, and like the the winds can get up to you know 130 even more in winter time. Like you can't even go near the joint. But why did Edmund Hillary and uh, 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 I think it was Tenzing? I can't remember. Um, Sherpa. The Sher Sherpa Tenzing Sherpa was yeah. it? Yeah. Want to climb uh, Mount Everest? I probably got that completely wrong in terms of the Sherpa, but. Um, I think, but because we have a hidden knowing that outside of our problems, there's a solution. Everybody has that. Mm. Everybody, that outside what is occupying the problem that I perceive is happening in my life, outside of that problem, there is definitely a fucking solution. Yeah, outside of that. my history that I've already lived, we know that the future holds more mystery. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. absolutely mm. know that. That is unquestionable. And, I, and nobody escapes that. Nobody gets away from that. Everybody knows it. And I have to say that for me, I am so, like, I'm so grateful that I came across this, this mm. work. Mm. I'm so grateful that we get to do what we do. Mm. We were sitting... Like we, we've just been looking and re, you know, we're always looking at our work and our seminars and what we, what we're giving to people and stuff. And the last few, the, the last mm. week or so we've mm. been looking at, you know, just stepping that up in terms of every seminar that we do. Mm. And we've been asked to think about different words that represent our, mm. our, our message or what people get out of different mm. things. And, you know, what are the results that people get out of the, coming and doing work with us mm. and you know we we've been asked to think about well what do they get and one of the things that we we're supposed to be answering is an, an intangible result of you know what 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 do they walk away with but they don't, they can't really hold it in their hand and one of our answer was love mm. but the truth about it is is that for us it's not an intangible result it's an actual tangible mm. physical yeah. thing that yeah. we get to feel yeah. when when we realise that there's something outside of that thing that we thought was our whole world, you know, this and and this that for us is what, what everybody else sees as extreme. We yeah. see as actually that is normal. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. like but, but I real. Th I think it's important. I I don't think everybody else sees it as extreme. <laughs> I okay. I, I'm telling you, I fucking don't. I don't think that everybody else sees it as extreme. I think the select see it as extreme. The, the, and we need that. You need that select group who see it as extreme to make sure that we stay on our fucking toes, to make sure yeah. that we are able to come up with those answers. Yeah. You know, to, because, you, you know, we're, we're part of a massive movement. I mean, the human development movement is huge. It's undeniable. There's a revolution in food happening out there. There's a revolution in, com in information happening out there. You know, we're in a, in, a, in a fucking age of wake up mofos, you know, and we are mm. waking up. We're, we're contemplating some really serious shit, like who are our world leaders and what are they feeding us? 
Um, how are they uh, kidnapping your consciousness with, with media forms? That's fucking reality, and that's happening right now. We are not the, the, the minority. We are the fucking majority, and the majority is going... I've had enough. I actually want, yeah, and and the majority is looking in because we have the mechanisms mechanisms nowadays yeah. to look inside of ourselves to not carry the nonsense around in our lives. I mean, so extreme is, hey, I've had something really shitty happen to me. Have you really? And I've been carrying it around for fucking twenty years. Really? Yep. And everybody else tells me how shitty it was what happened to me. Really? And how's that fucking working for you? <laughs> Well, I know. <laughs> it's not working. Right. So do you want to see it another way? Do you want to shift it? Because I can guarantee you what lies inside of you is way bigger and way greater than what you think is the fucking nonsense that occurred in your life. It, it's the, you are a, you know, you are a, a, a genius waiting to just wake up. What, mm. about if, what about if what occurred to you was there to enable you and empower you and shift you and make you shine and encourage other people to do exactly the same thing? Why else? I mean, life just doesn't fuck with us like that. Yeah, totally. You know? Mind blown a little bit today, I think. That yeah. was, that yeah. was. Yeah, I got a bit intense there. Yeah. You did, but that was good. I like that. Yeah. I hope that um, I yeah. hope that was helpful for people. Yeah. It seems when I put these glasses on, I get a bit intense. Do you think? Mm. Okay, yeah. All righty. Have fun. Yeah, that was good. Cheers. Boom. <laughs>